There is a place where two mountains almost touch each other. And in between, there's a fount that flows. It flows down, it flows into the stream. Step into the stream, flow with the flow of my fount. Flow downstream, flow in the direction that I'm leading you. It is a place of peace, it is a place of cleansing. Flow by the spirit, flow with my stream. He or a lobo shake here, Tata ya mama. Yendere ya soko ya mama shata. Yoko bobo soko to. Hendere ya babaka ya lobo shende. He koto la babaka ya. Hendere ya sondo ishembe. Yoko boko ya. He kondo ya sanda la lobo shende de ya baba sata. He shaka ya mobolo lo sondo. He shaka ya. Hey Shakaya la lobo shendere la baba sata. I believe part of this word is that I pray that you will get a revelation of who I am. That I'm the almighty God and besides me there is no other. Move in my spirit and in my power. Move in my in your authority that I have given you in Jesus name. Walk in your authority. Move in your authority. Speak in your authority in Jesus' name. I saw uh, the Masonic pyramid with the eye atop it contrasted with Mount Sinai and the flame atop it. In this season, I decree and declare we will choose the tree of life and not the tree of the knowledge of good and evil. We will choose fruit of the spirit and not fruit of the enemy or the trappings of the enemy. And I say, Lord, we will inherit the promised land. We will inherit as you shake everything that can be shaken. We will inherit in Jesus' name. So I'm going to prophesy into what Matt just said. The Lord says that this is a season where it is going to become so evident the difference between good and evil. And that which was muddied in times past will now be crystal clear. For you will recognize the fire of my presence and the fire of my anointing. And you will follow hard after that fire and you will say, oh my, I can even feel the heat of it on my body. It is burning my face, your presence. But the Lord says, am I not the spirit of burning? Am I not he that can destroy and burn up that which is the opposite of who I am? So I say to you, you will see the difference in a clearer way than you have in past seasons. And I will cause you to shout to those things and see them dismantled before your face. Hallelujah. What I, what I felt in, in, uh, in Adrian's tongues was, uh, was a fight. Well, I just, I, I just I picked a fight. So I'm decreeing, we're going to fight. God's called us to fight. Pick, take up your armor, fight. Don't beg, don't cry for nothing. Decree and declare it. Take your stand. Don't back down from the enemy. This is the hour to fight. 
This is the hour to be strong in faith and not weak and draw back. Stand up. Open your mouth. Declare a thing. Be violent. Take the kingdom of heaven by force in Jesus' name. Also, while I, I, Adrienne was um, singing out in tongues, I saw these rocks, and um, the Lord said the rocks are not to be a stumbling block for you, but they are your stepping stones as you go forth into battle. I'm going to add on to what Richard said about the dream's tongue. I heard br my bride, this is, my, this is the time of war. This is the time of war. Am I not great? Am I not the God of impossibilities? Didn't I give you the strategies in my word, which is the sword of the spirit? You have the power within you. Speak it forth in Jesus' name. Something came to mind that uh, my old pastor story that he had told. He used to beat this boy up every day He in school. He would beat him up every day. He would get him up in the corner and he would beat him up. One day, that boy caught a revelation that this wasn't going down anymore. And he came out of that corner and he tore him up. So I'm saying to you, catch a revelation of who you are and don't continue to allow the enemy to beat us up in Jesus' name. That's the wall. I want to share something uh, that took place this past week. Carol's up here, right? <laughs> a couple months ago, I had given a uh, testimony of um, John had been challenging us to open up our mouths and to speak. And about a couple months ago, I was doing an inspection down in Wildwood. And if you remember, I had to, I traveled with the guy in his golf course, court, cart and at the very end, he was telling me about, well, as we were driving down, uh, he's telling me about his dad who was dying from cancer. And I said, Brian, uh, as he took me back to my car, I said, can I just pray for your dad right now? And so I prayed. And sometimes I, I pray different things. But this particular time, I prayed that, I did pray that God would heal his dad of cancer per se. But I prayed, I prayed that, and I don't know why I did it at that time. I said, Lord, if it's your time for Brian's dad to go home, then take him home. I don't know why I said that, but that's what I just said at that time. This past week, I got, uh, on Wednesday, I got a, um, an email from the customer care department for the company that I work for. And uh, the lady, the, the email said, Sig, uh, there's a young man named Brian that called up, he got your business card, and he asked you to get a, he asked if you would call him up. I didn't know who it was at the time. I couldn't remember. Uh, I called him up, and I'm thinking, oh, what's this about? He called up customer care, HR, oh, what's this going to be about? And he said, um, Sig, I don't know if you remember, but you prayed for my dad on the golf cart. And he says, I want to tell you. And I says, Brian, did your dad, is your dad doing well? He goes, no, my dad is with the Lord now. I didn't know it at the time, but his dad was a believer. And he said, when you... Uh, said, can I pray for your father right now in the golf cart? When you did that, everything totally changed. Everything, he said, changed. The peace of God fell on my mom and my family, and everything totally changed. And he said, I, I just want to thank you for what you had done. Now, I don't always do that on work because I just don't do that. It's like we can't preach and that kind of thing there. However, this particular time, I just felt to do that. 
And I always feared, because I always give a business card, and it has the telephone number for customer care. And Cheryl, I always feared that someone is going to say, you know what, one of your reps out there dared to pray with me and talk about Jesus. And I always, like, that's in the back of my mind. Well, I got this, this voice message, and I want to play it for you. This is from the customer care department. And where did it go here? It's right. Uh, it was Wednesday. Here we go. Now, this is, uh, she's got a southern Texas kind of a voice here. So let's, let's see if you can pick this up here. Uh, it's just a 3480. I, um, this is in regards to Seapoint Beach Hut. I got a call from a young man, Brian. He really, really needs to talk to you. I'm also going to send you an email. Very important that you reach out to him. You did something that was really, really amazing. And I just let him know God's people are always at work and how good God is. So please, I'm going to send you an email as well. So it was incredible because she just happened to pick up that phone call. Now, it could have been somebody else that picked it up. And then I might have gotten a call from the VP at that time. But, but you know what? And I had said that when I gave that testimony. When the Spirit of God puts something in your heart, don't think about it. Just do it. Don't try to figure out, well, how's it going to be received? Should I, should I, if, if, it's not the devil that's doing that because he wouldn't tell you to pray for somebody. It's probably not yourself because your own fears are not going to do that. But the Spirit of God will say, you know, I want you to pray for Brian right now. And so I didn't even think about it. I just said, Brian, can I just pray for your dad? And then, then God just takes care of the rest. We don't have to sweat. In Jesus' name. 